What are you doing? Uh, so I'm waiting on parts of my electric motor. It's a little bit of a different video this week. I'm waiting on parts of the electric, so I've wanted to do this for a while. I've normally got my transducer, my pan optics, live scope mount at the back of the boat. But it's go for fishing the barrow dams and that sort of stuff. Always spot locked on a point or tied to a tree and casting off the back. But I'm doing a lot of salt water, it's like saltwater barrow stuff lately, and just generally fishing the creeks. And um, it'd be nice to have it at the front of the boat. So I've got a transducer pole mount from uh, Rob and Tommy at uh, you know, Sunshine Coast Marine Electrical Doctor to transducer poles Australia mount. Um, so that just runs a Ram D ball in it. So we're going to mount that at the front, and then we're going to see Brenton from uh, where's he? Bulletproof Industries tomorrow. And he's going to make us up a mount, tab up a mount for the front of the boat for the screen to go on. So we're going to jump into this. I'm going to use Eli while he's here filming, and uh, he can hold the drill. He doesn't like manual labour, he reckons, but he can push that button, he'll be fine. And we'll get this mounted up and I'll show you when it's on there and then I'll run you through whatever else is in the boat and we'll do an on-water tour when we're done. Close holder. Yep. So what I've done is I've gone and made a block. It's just a bit of like HDP plastic. Because it's only going into a glass gunnel, got a block so bolts go through. That'll go underneath just to sandwich the bottom of it, and then I've got nuts and washers on the other side, so it just creates a bit of strength there. Like the ball's not going to cop a lot of movement or anything like that, but it's just a bit of extra insurance there to make sure you don't do any damage to the glass or any cracks or anything like that. So, the reason I went with the Transducer Poles Australia now is because it's removable. I've got a custom cover for the boat so that anything now that I add on top of the boat will affect the cover. So these are pretty straightforward. The D-ball just slides on and then they've just got a little grub screw at the back so it locks on and means it can't go anywhere. So it's nice and handy. I'm sort of racking my brain about how I was going to do that um, without affecting the cover. So that works a treat. I was just lucky that Rob and Tommy at Sunshine Coast Marine Doctor, uh, Sunshine Coast Electrical Doctor, Marine Electrical Doctor. There's nothing there. I'm making a mash of it. Um, I was lucky they had one in stock, so I didn't actually have to order one from Brizzy, which was handy. Well, we didn't get this thing. So that's going on the other side. Yep. Right. So effectively, what's going on underneath the gunnel is imagine the gunnel's in between there. Can't break something, hold on. Okay. Get that together. Imagine that you've got the gun on the boat, that bit in there. So it's just like one big washer. Just creates some support underneath. It means you don't just have a nut or a washer on the other side that can pull or twist or bust through the glass at all. Oh, and that's why I got that wrong, because that's the crap. Just gonna put a bit of super flex on, it's just make sure everything sticks and stays stuck. The bolts will be holding everything down, but this will just Keep it all well and truly glued on there. We'll do it on both sides. This stuff makes an absolute mess. The only thing messier than white sinker flex is black sinker flex. So. Put the sinker.
I was got a little star bit so no yeah. one can vlog it. That's just how they came from Bunnings. Yep. Okay, opposite corner. Yep. Oh, nah, it's, it's just pulling through the plastic. Yep. Yep. Pivot. Sound are we gonna mount there? Waist height. I'm just being very lazy efficient. That's how it's that done. Can just be. Dookadook is there. Spun around. Can you drive it? Okay, good. And then you just slot that out. When you're um Yeah, when you don't want it on the boat, just take that pin off. Then we'll just spin out. And then take it away. Spin that off. And now it comes away. Go on. That's all you left with. Bam and the dirt is gone. Alright, oh, so I've just moved myself over into the shade. I've got the pole on. Just gonna tie the side pocket and some wiring. And then we're good to go for today. Go see Brenton tomorrow. Get that screen mounted up. It should sit about here-ish, I reckon. Try and get it about waist height. I'll be rock and roll, and then I'll put the boat on and run through everything. How they both mount up, like front and back, how it all works, and it's a bit of a rundown of the boat. I get a few questions on what it is and that sort of stuff. So, yeah, cheers. So all I've done there is just taken out these little bits of timber. Just run up inside the side pocket, so timber's probably not ideal, but this stuff's been in here for a long time and there's nothing wrong with it. It's just the holes have started opening up, just from taking the side pockets out over time, but Bracket on for the pole, put the side pockets and everything like that back in. Don't forget GoPro, it's still hanging on the back of the boat. There we go. At the moment, the cord's just running down the side of it. I don't actually mind, I thought I might, but there's not really too many other options apart from putting plug in there. But I'll see how I go, I'll see how much I use it up the front versus down the back and so on. So I'm really happy with how that side pocket came up. Uh, I'll run through all of this one, actually put the boat on the water and I'll put the mount in the back and show you how that one was set up and put my Solix set up on there. But then, all we've got left to do now is go and see Brenton tomorrow, use his fabricator brain and picture this there sort of thing, basically. Right, uh, so to throw a little bit of context in here, I've been racking my brain about how exactly I wanted to make this sound amount. I knew what I wanted it to look like and how I wanted it to function and I've got a cleat, a removable cleat on the front of the boat that can pop out. So I had somewhere to mount it and I knew how I wanted to do it, but without being able to weld, I had nowhere to put it together. So I was thinking and thinking and thinking about how I was going to do it. And then I went, oh, I know where I'm going to go. I got a good mate Brenton up at Bulletproof Industries who makes epic trailers and sent him a message and said, hey bro, this is what I'm thinking. Any chance we could knock it up? And he said, sure, come up Sunday. So I went up there, saw him. And I'll drop the photo in here of what I sent him, like the image I sent him initially of what I drew up, and it is exactly what we made up. So it worked perfectly. All right. 
Look at that, I've got the pole all taped up, the handle's taped up. Just giving it a hit with some turps. I don't know whether the turps or metho would have be been better to clean it, but I had turps, so that's what I used. I'm gonna get him with some primer and then just top coat it with a, just a satin black so it should match him with the bracket on the, on the sounder and look all spiffy, but we'll get into that and I'll show you the finished product. All right, there she is all mounted up. The pole of Brenton it up. It's perfect, we just put a couple little clamps on there to keep him going anywhere. Those pins hold it in place, but she's stabilized. It's in a nice hip height. Great signal on the plot on there, that's from getting bit by a hair tail last time. Yeah, he's done an epic job of it, works exactly how I wanted to. Good. Well, there she is, the rig in all her glory. New pole mounted up the front. Sorry, not a new pole, but a new bracket fabbed up and mounted. I've just been having a play with it. Got a couple of really cool fish, which is awesome. But that's it. Mounted up, sits at about waist height. Nice and easy to see. Down up this pole mount drive right beside it. It's all streamlined, it's great, it's very easy to use. So I get a few questions about the boat, what is it, how big is it, that sort of stuff. So it's a 445 Coastal Flyer built by Coastal Cat in Caloundra. There's not that many of them around and I don't even know if he still makes many more, but it's a cracking rig, I love it. I've had it for a couple of years. Um, it's something I rode in one a long time ago, sort of said to myself, I'll buy one of these one day. And when this thing popped up, it was too cheap to pass up. So I bought it, I've done a few things to it, and I love it. Uh, I've got a 40 horsepower Mercury four stroke on the back of it. it moves it along about 45 k's, top end speed with me and another mate, like me and a mate in it. So it gets along all I need. I've got a 55 pound motor guide XI5 in the front of it, so the GPS version with spot lock. I run a Hummingbird Solix 10 as my main sounder. Solix there. Love it. Um, couldn't beat the side scan on that, which is why I run that for my side scan and down scan stuff. And then I've got the Garmin 8410 telescope unit. Fill her up the front there. So I'll chuck in some footage of how I had that mounted down the back as well, so you can sort of see the two options I've got with it now for this to focus. Maybe, maybe not. Um, sea deck through the boat. It's not legit sea deck, it's just stuff I bought on eBay and it's been great. It's a couple of years old now, so there's bits of it are sort of starting to peel and fade and that sort of stuff, but I'll redo that again soon enough. I've uh, got 45 litres of fuel under the floor, so handy for those longer trips or trips away, and then a kill tank at the back or storage box. But yeah, that is the rig. Love it. Brother guys, thanks for watching another video. If you do have any questions about the boat or any of the gear I use, just drop them in the comments below. I always try and get back to people when they comment or ask any questions. Um, if you like the videos, guys, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. There's plenty of cool stuff on the way. It's going to be pretty cool here while I was actually testing all this stuff out too, so that should not be far away. Anyway, see you in the next one. Cheers.